This is Spike Slauson from Me First and the Gimme Gimmies, and you're tuning in to Heavy Mag. Beautiful, Spike. Thanks for joining us today, brother. Not at all. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. So Me First and the Gimme Gimmies release your new live album, Blow It, at Madison's Hinsignata on June the 14th, mate. Like, um, it's not your Well first... done. So I did it all right, didn't I? <laughs> well now, said, it's... yes. She's not your first radio or bar mitzvah, bro. So do you still get nervous at this stage of the career before an album comes out? Absolutely. But it was our first quinceanera party. Um, and, uh, you know, like it's devised. It's intended to be awkward and comic and tragic um, uh, all at once. And so when if it is a success, then it's likely going to be excruciating in the moment if that makes any sense like it's very nerve-wracking like so like we vetted the uh the contestants that won uh the dubious prize of of uh having us play their quinceanera party and um we want to make sure that there were no uh natural allies uh in attendance like nobody that knew who we were or was going to be inclined to liking us or our performance. That was very important to us, but then, uh, and it was the right decision, but uh, when I was about to go out and actually face the uh, the crowd, it was, uh, it was difficult. It was a challenge, um, but we had a good time. Uh, the, the, the crowd eventually, they turned around. I think we finally played a song from uh, this millennium, and that that made a big difference. I think, and there were light sticks and snacks and refreshments, and um, so. And furthermore, uh, in the uh, in the intermission between our two sets and uh, after our second and last set, the DJ played um, uh, for hours. Music yeah. that uh, Madison and her friends liked and recognized and could dance to. So they had a great time. Um, but, you know, while we were playing, that there it was definitely touch and go at some <laughs> certain points. People were leaving in droves at, at one point. You could see, like, there were some people that were giving me kind of nasty looks. There were people um, writing messages to one another, you know sort of surreptitiously and looking us up at us and shake you can see it in some of the in some of the video footage um you know we're not for everybody i guess but uh you know um to our credit i will say i think we turned it around good to ultimately see it. much like any of our live shows any any successful live show at least to me uh we're able to troll a crowd to the point of uh vocal uh expressions of displeasure maybe even booing before we reel them back in and make friends and uh and you know funny enough i was just talking about this those those are sometimes your best uh you sell the most t-shirts on those nights when you when you really when you get the crowd aggravated you know and when you feel when, when you make them feel like they're not necessarily in on the joke like they don't know whether they should be offended or uh you know you know uh humored or it, 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 it's it's uh you know i i i think that's the secret to our success it is, it's Modest, a very, though fine it may line, be. very fine line too isn't it between being pissed off being excited being turned on or being repulsed <laughs> yeah they're not distant cousins i gotta say they're definitely related <laughs> <laughs> now i'm guessing quinceanera is a, a spanish word because of the accent over the r like over here in australia mate we've got no idea what that is bro so can you tell us what it actually is it's a sweet 15 birthday party so in and uh i don't know how widespread it is but i don't think that that you like it's it's a common thing in spain for example but certainly in mexico and central america it is a big event, not only in a 15-year-old girl's life, but in her family's uh, life, because that is, um, uh, it's a, a girl's coming-of-age ceremony. In fact, 
we learned a song uh, called La Ultima Muñeca, which means the last doll. And that song is about uh, that she's wearing lipstick, that she's changing and developing, and he never gives the doll to her. He just keeps it uh, behind his back. And the song is meant to be kind of sad, but also like a celebration of, uh, you know, of, of coming of age. Uh, so that's kind of what it is. And, you know, some of them, uh, people, you know, what 15 year olds need like five kegs, you know, <laughs> at their party. But, you know, th and this one certainly did not have five kegs. There were snacks and refreshments. But um, so in other words, it's it's a big event for the family as well, for her uncles and, and cousins and mom and dad. And uh, they definitely have a good time, too. Right. That actually raises a good point. Like Madison, like as a 15 year old, they're, they're carefree. They don't really give a fuck about much in the world. But how, how did a parent, like a parent, this is a big deal for them. Like, how did they go with it? Like, were they, did they get angry or did they sort of sit back and enjoy the experience? They sat back and enjoyed it. Some of her uncles got a little mad at, at some of the off color uh, jokes that, that, that we told, uh, um, Nothing inappropriate, but, uh, you know, like I said, it was touch and go at points. Um, but mom and dad really dug it. And I talked to Madison afterwards and she had a great time. And as I said, the DJ played a lot of music that, that they could actually dig. And uh, to our credit, we did play uh, an Olivia Rodrigo song. So, you know, we, we can get contemporary with the best of... Uh, cover bands <laughs> now listening through it bro like I opened with changes from black sabbath which sounded like it went down like a lead balloon like in, in hindsight would you open it did with it, it, yes absolutely um no it wasn't hindsight hindsight i was happy that i did it it was the present tense that i had a hard time with like man am i really about to go out and play a black sabbath song um and uh we did and like I said, it was an inside joke, so it is a very fine line between, like, because we, we did not want to mock the family at all, um, especially not on a special day. But at the same time, we were trying to make something humorous uh, for, hopefully, for them, for ourselves, for the people that will hopefully listen to the record and find it humorous. Um, like, for example, like, I'm, I'm proud of the music on the record, but I think a lot of what will really put the listener in the moment is in between the songs is and you can sort of hear how excruciating certain moments were um as in people leaving and just people sort of staying seated in their chairs like it wasn't you know hey move up like how many times can you say that you know before it starts to sound like begging you know <laughs> but uh go ahead yeah, so on, on, on that matter like um you, you've kept in like the between song comments and then all the bands are like, is that all fair dinkum from the night or did you go back later on and add something there? No, that was all, that was all from the night. You know, some of it is, some of it's uh, premeditated, but uh, a lot of it is, you know, it's, I, I, I never know how to troll a crowd until I'm in front of a crowd. If that makes any sense as, as far as like the timing and as far as, you know, like uh, writing those fine lines that you spoke about, like it's it's a uh, it's like it's a chemistry. You can write things down that you'd like to say, but you know, maybe a third of them or less actually work. And it's it's all about chemistry, and that's what's to me uh, is so hard to capture about uh, any kind of recording. And to me, like a great record the mark of a great record would be that it is an event uh, that uh, sort of resonates and snowballs through time and people interpret and misinterpret and make up stories in their head about, you do it subconsciously. Every time you listen to a record, like I wonder what it was like in the recording studio, like exile on main street, like the, you know, things like that are actually famous where there's like documented history about how it went down. Um, but I'm sure a lot is fabulated and I'm sure a lot of the stuff like you listen to it. And then the more people that do that, you make a record kind of like a mythical kind of thing. And so 
my cheat code to uh to having a record like that was to actually make it an actual event and uh and have that sort of resonate through time and there is video footage so you can actually see that we weren't you know that's not prefabricated or anything like that and uh you can see what a horrible time uh her friends and family are having at least for the first uh 45 minutes or so um but um but there's a lot that i hope you know just it, it it's exemplary of what our live show is like uh, there's at one point there you actually sing happy birthday to Madison, mate. Like, did she blush? Did she? Did she? Did you? How did you manage to freak her out? No, I think she was like, you know, I think she was embarrassed by us or something like that. Like, what? Like, you know what I mean? Like, we were an overweening parent or something like that. You know what I mean? Like, get out of here, gimmies. You know what I mean? Like, it. You know. Um. No. Uh. No. She. She kept her composure. She was dressed beautifully she had a huge quinceanera dress um and no she did not betray any you know she didn't blush or uh and she was a good sport throughout the entire thing and uh and that that was important to me to see that she had a, actually had a good time was uh the most important uh thing because had she had a bad time had we just been purely trolls i would have felt terrible <laughs> bless her cotton socks <laughs> now, yeah you also, you also featured a horn section for the first time mate like how, how was that how did that go down pretty good i i mean it you know they uh a lot of the times they, they well i i would say they 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 uh wrote a good line uh sort of in the middle of honoring the original arrangements and sort of creating their own based on different time signatures and, and velocity and all that kind of stuff. I think they did great. And I think it really added to the, it made it feel like a party, like an extravaganza event sort of, you know, I think by the time we got the, the horn players out, people were like, okay, all right. Like these guys aren't just taking the piss. You know what I mean? Maybe we'll move up and dance a little bit um so yeah i was very happy we were able to include that i think like i'm not crazy about like 90s ska by any means but like like for example i was just talking about uh the saints the first track on eternally yours um which i'm sure you're familiar with and that's like that's got a whole wind section in it and it's one of the toughest punk songs ever or rock songs for that matter ever played um and uh no man alice cooper there's a lot of great uh examples of wind sections in rock music and that and we we only did it in the in the uh in the mexican songs so uh that was another thing in songs where that that already had uh that either had uh wind parts or like a string parts that that could be imitated with horns so yeah and both the guys both as players they're both uh inimitable yeah hey, consummate just like, professionals <laughs> just like yourselves brother <laughs> oh you're sweet to say that <laughs> yeah. no, just say someone's stumbled across this interview mate and they've got no idea what the fuck we're talking about like what, what's the best way to, to introduce them to me first in the gimme gimmies and, and what you do oh, well um I'm hoping that this record will be, you know, like we've, we've been playing and recording since 96 or so. Um, but this record is, is like a culmination of what we've been doing the whole time and how we've been developing our uh, live set. I say developing, but it's just really just a trolling instinct. Like I, I can't, you know, like praise and unconditional unfettered applause it's like it kind of turns my stomach a little bit like that might sound condescending and elitist or something but um i would much rather uh you know have it peppered with some booze and some and like i said man you sell more t-shirts on those nights i don't know why it's something about the human animal like we love to be trolled and then you know as long as you close the circle and you're laughing and you pretend to be friends at the end and everything. I think that's the key. But like, you know, 
the farther you take them to the point where they're not sure if they're supposed to be offended or like disapproving, uh, the better the better merch night you're gonna have. Why? <laughs> I don't know. That's just the way it is. <laughs> Human nature. <laughs> All right, Spike. Well, thanks very much for your time, bro. It's been a pleasure speaking with you. Blow it at Madison's Kinsenietta is out June the 14th, and it's another slab of excellent from me first in the Gimme Gimme. So do yourselves a favor. And well get... said. Well said. Kinsenietta, you said it. You said exactly right. You know what? We're a band of all ages, all genres, and this song is proof. I know you're going to dig it. It's very contemporary, right, guys? So let's take it away. I guess you're getting everything you want Got a new car and your car is really taking off It's like it never even happened But you what the fuck is up with that? And good for you, it's like you never even met me Remember when you swore to God I was the only person who ever got you Screw that, screw you You will never have to hurt the way you know that I do Good for you, you look happy and healthy Not me, if you ever care to ask Good for you Thank you. Thank you so much.